I'm Mary Ruiz, Chair of New College of Florida Board of Trustees. Of course, the airplane is right on time. We're used to that in New College. And I'm a proud alumna as well. And it's my privilege to welcome each of you, our honored guests. Students, faculty, staff, alumni, college presidents, trustees, foundation and alumni board of directors, and community members. We are delighted you could join us. We, together, are about to experience an historic moment in New College history. The inauguration of our sixth president and the first woman to be appointed to the post Dr. Patricia Oker. And I'm going to invite our platform party to sit. Um, and uh, I'll be introducing them in a few minutes. I'm pleased to extend a warm welcome to Dr. Oker's family. Her spouse, Dr. Richard Edging, welcome. Daughter, Kate Oker Edging. And to the woman who made today possible, um, Mom, Ethel Oker. Our platform party, we will hear prayer offered today by Reverend Dwight Henry, who is also our college chaplain, and Rabbi Susan Marks, who is also a member of the new college faculty. We look forward today to remarks from the Honorable, Honorable Eric Arroyo, Mayor of Sarasota, and Chancellor of the State University System of Florida, Marshall Kreiser. Dr. Mike Michelson, 
Our past president of New College will be offering a lemonade, lemonade toast on the Bayfront after the ceremony, and we invite you to join us. We're going to go off to the right. There'll be a receiving line. We'd love to, to greet you. I also introduce you to those who preceded me as chairs of the Board of Trustees, my role models and mentors, Keith Monda, Felice Schulainer, and Bill Johnston. Allison Gardner, yes. <laughs> Allison Gardner is chair of the New College Foundation, and Dan Stoltz is chair of the New College Alumni Association. Representing our students is Sophia Lombardi, president of the Student Alliance. Shanta, Shana Ikatora, who is president of the People of Color Union, and Janelle Swan, and Jasmine McCassler, who are from the Black Student Union. Janelle is president, and Jasmine is president-elect. <laughs> Naomi Copeland is chair of our staff council. Dr. Suzanne Sherman is our provost. Dr. David Harvey is chair of the faculty, and Dr. Queen Zabriskie is dean of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Dr. Bill Woodson is our dean of outreach and engagement. Marjorie Thomas is vice president of student affairs. Chris Kinsley, vice president of administrative affairs, and Mary Ann Young, who is vice president of the New College Foundation. Dr. Oker, I believe, I speak for the entire platform party, that we are honored to have you as our president. You can count on our support toward your success as our leader for New College of Florida. I also want to give many thanks and much appreciation to the inauguration committee who organized a whole week of events with a theme very important to Dr. Oker, renewing community in all of its forms. Inauguration Week launched last Saturday with an academic showcase, virtual classes, a juried student art exhibit, and the New Schools of Black Thought History Symposium themed Reclaiming Wellness. The week concludes next Saturday with the new college community of students, staff, and faculty getting back to our community in a day of service. Today, we celebrate New College as Florida's public honors college and the continuation of our legacy of preparing intellectually curious students for lives of great achievement. We entrust our future to the collaborative leadership of Dr. Patricia Oker. You will often hear her say, we all have a contribution to make to the future of New College. That means she'll put you to work. I just wanted to warn you. Um, we know Dr. Oker to be a passionate advocate for the values of New College, a proven academic leader as the former Dean of Arts and Sciences at the University of Missouri, and a dedicated believer in the engagement of students in our community and our community in the education of our students. Now I invite Reverend Dwight Henry, the college chaplain, to give the invocation. Good afternoon. My name is Reverend Dwight, your campus chaplain. As we invoke God's presence with us, I will open and close with words spoken by songwriter singer Jermaine Edwards. Your presence, I quote, your presence makes the difference in our lives. Let us pray. For feel of justice, love, and laughter, glimpses of beauty, Lord, we love thy world, this nation, and this wonderful college. We ask blessings on all those gathered here representatives of this great academic institution of our land, New College of Florida. Trustees, our dedicated administrators and staff, and our reason for being our students. 
We most particularly seek your blessings on Dr. Oker as she joins the New College of Florida community to lead us to the opportunities and true obstacles that lie ahead. May fresh challenges excite her heart and mind and spark in her the creativity to lead us beyond any old limits, holding nothing back. May she and her family feel at home here and find a continued passion where what is new draws enrichment from all that has come before. Lord, bless Dr. Oker as she leads us in educating students who never sharpen their minds by narrowing them, but rather become seekers of truth, willing to go where some of us has never gone before. One that involves an expedition of courage and moral stamina, where self become less and others become more. Oh God, take Dr. Oker's mind and think through her. Take her lips and speak through her. Take her heart and set it on fire continually as she continues to lead this wonderful institution. So let your presence make the difference in our lives, in my life, and in Dr. Oker's life as she leads us into the next chapter. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Henry. Now I invite the mayor of Sarasota, Eric Arroyo, to give remarks. First of all, no one told me that I'd be speaking first, so. Thank you. Um, I remember the first time I spoke to Dr. Oker, and I walked away with a sense of pride and a calm, sort of as if I knew that things were in good hands, and I know that they are. You see, much of the challenge that we have now as a community in Sarasota, many of those problems will be solved by you, by the students and, and the people that continue to be here long after many of us have retired. Affordable housing and, you know, bringing great quality jobs, entrepreneurship. The things of the future are in your hands. And I am completely 100% behind Dr. Oker in preparing you for what's to lie ahead. I'm, you're probably looking at me like, who is this kid standing in front of us? Well, this kid, to some people, to some of you, I'm probably 150 years old. I'm, I'm 32. I'm the youngest mayor in the history of Sarasota. And that happened by getting involved at an early age. So I implore all of you to reach out to your faculty, reach out to your teachers, and reach out to Dr. Oker and find your passion early because getting involved now in any cause will make a great, great impact later on. This is one of our great institutions, and if you get anything from this speech, just remember that the future is in your hands, and any single one of you can change everything. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Arroyo. Now, I invite Marshall Kreiser, who is our Chancellor of the State University System, to give remarks. And as he comes up, I want to thank Chancellor Kreiser for his support, advice, and um, enjoyment of the new college academic experience. He, um, he is a true supporter, and I am very grateful to him for that. The most dangerous thing at a time like this to say is, let me be brief. <laughs> because you usually aren't when you start with that. So instead, what I'd like to do instead of remarks, what I'd like to do is say thank you. I'd like to say thank you to Chair Ruiz and the Board of Trustees at New College University. 
I, I would like to say thank you to the search committee at this college. I'd like to say thank you to every one of you who participated, whether it was through the search process to, or to this today, for bringing our system, Dr. Ogren. I want to say thank you in advance to her family, because these jobs are family affairs and they often take someone we care about and they have to go take care of someone else that they care about as well. But it is a joyous day today in our system, and I would share with you just in the time since Dr. Oker first arrived on this campus, she has become a valuable member of the team of presidents that we convene weekly and talk about the challenges that face us. She's become a valuable spokesperson for the students at this university and the faculty at this university and the staff at this university. And I also want to say thank you, and Dr. Oker, you asked me earlier how many of these I've done. I will tell you I've only done one that was led with pipes and drums. And that absolutely was something to say thank you for. So I thank you all for this opportunity to join with you today and join in the celebration. But most particularly, I thank you because I believe the future of New College is all ahead of us. We're building on a great tradition, a great foundation, but most especially we're building on a new leader who is going to be a part of this family, part of our university system family, and will make all of Florida better. Thank you. Thank you, Chancellor Kreiser. It's now my distinct pleasure to introduce Acapelago, who is going to come out and um, sing for us. It is New College's singing group, and as the name suggests, they sing a cappella.
Okay, this is the part of the wedding where we say, this is it. <laughs> it's my pleasure to invite former board chair and alumna Felice Schuleiner to join me for the presentation of the symbol of office, if Dr. Oker would join us. seal depicted on this podium was adopted in 1969 to symbolize meanings of continuity and variety. The sun, the sea, the wind, and the four points of the compass, signifying that New College will always move forward and display the constant newness of the search for knowledge and truth. This medallion was worn by President John Elmendorf at his inauguration in 1967. Dr. Oker. I think that means we're married. of our founders and look ahead to the exciting future of New College. I am filled with gratitude today to the search committee, to the board of trustees, and to the board of governors for giving me this opportunity, to my family, my mom and my husband, Dr. Richard Edging, for joyously embarking on this most unexpected adventure, and to our grown children, my living proof, Kate and Jack, for cheering us on and to the faculty, staff, alumni, and community members for welcoming us so warmly here. And I also want to add a special thanks to the planning committee for this wonderful ceremony and to the grounds crew for preparing all week this beautiful setting. I am honored to serve as the sixth president of New College of Florida, an institution that was founded by the citizens of Sarasota and Manatee counties who love the artistic and intellectual vibrancy of their community. It was, they said, a college town without a college. These were visionary people, not content with replicating someone else's success. As a community, they wanted something new. Rejecting a lockstep curriculum that dampened curiosity, our founders and the early faculty members designed in curriculum and the physical campus a college that emphasized undergraduate research, creativity, and independent thinking. Defying educational conventions, they encouraged risk-taking and what we would now call a growth mindset. Their goal and ours was to nurture true innovators, able to see new and better ways of doing things, new solutions to our most pressing challenges. This visionary commitment to a liberal arts education of the highest caliber was renewed when Florida welcomed New College into the state university system, which is now the top-ranked system in the nation. Never having to choose between education of the highest quality and affordability, Florida students can, can attend to name just three options, a top five research university, the nation's top historically black university, and yes, a top five public liberal arts college among more than 30 in the nation. Hi <laughs> Higher education has changed dramatically since New College was founded. More and more universities rely on large lecture classes in which students follow a standardized curriculum and have little opportunity for shaping their own education. Here at New College, we do things differently, not to be unconventional for its own sake, but because we know the power of our founder's vision. We understand that developing the next generation of innovators is as needed now as ever. 
As we consider the future of New College, I want to return to a challenge left by a founders. They specifically charged every generation to ask, what is new about New College? Today, I have three answers to their question. First, New College empowers students as individual learners. The two key ingredients in my mind to this amazing curriculum are curiosity and challenge. And here at New College, students are expected to find their passions, to be curious, and to take an active role in their learning. We don't believe in a one-size-fits-all approach to learning, and that means that curiosity isn't a tagline here, it guides everything we do. And because our mission is to nurture these individuals to their full potential, we need a much more sophisticated way of assessing student learning. So the focus here, as you all know, isn't on meeting some arbitrary number or letter. It is instead on ensuring that each individual learner learns how to learn. In comparison with many other honors colleges, we also have a very different understanding, I would argue, of challenge. Like virtually all honors college, colleges, we proudly describe our curriculum as challenging, but ours is of an entirely different sort. The point here isn't to weed out students or to create arbitrary distinctions between so-called gifted students and the rest. Here, students find challenges that they are passionate about, and our curriculum is structured beautifully so that they build their skills and confidence in tackling these challenges. In the process, they learn for themselves what they're capable of and develop the resiliency that will enrich their entire lives. If our curriculum were easy, our students would never realize what they are capable of. And unlike many schools that offer such opportunities to only a select group of students, and then often only in their final year, we provide this education to every new college student from the moment they arrive on campus. This combination of self-directed learning and challenge empowers students, and I have seen its effect in virtually every interaction I've had with alumni. You are a bold group of individuals who have developed over time a confidence in your ability to do hard things, even things that other people see as impossible. As an educator, a marathoner, and yes, someone who loves to pick up a heavy barbell, I admire this quality of New College alumni. So yes, I know that New College is still new because we empower students as individuals. But that is not the only way that New College is still new. We are also as new as ever because New College embraces the power of relationships and community. I know that learning, good learning, occurs at large universities dominated by large lecture halls. But that is not the kind of learning we aspire to here. Again, we do things differently because ours is a different vision. Our purpose is not to produce the largest number of graduates, but rather to nurture those innovators with the biggest impact. And to achieve that kind of in innovation, we remain committed to a different kind of learning. We understand the conditions, and our founders did too, that make deep learning possible. Long before neuroscientists identified the crucial role of relationships in human learning, New College's founders understood that learning of the highest order occurs when we feel supported and loved, when we can take risks and be vulnerable. It is then, and not in times of great anxiety and stress, that our brains are most receptive to new ideas and new ways of thinking. This isn't about having a soft approach, as some of our critics might say. It is quite simply how humans learn. This focus on authentic human relationships is one of the most profound stories that New College has to tell. At a time when more and more universities move large numbers of students through classes without any real opportunity for one-on-one -on -one faculty engagement, New College has never wavered from the authentic relationships among our faculty, students, and staff that are essential to learning. In the eight months that I've served as president, I have asked many of you to share with me your New College story. These are inspiring stories of human relations, stories of a staff member who taught a struggling student to become a brilliant writer, a faculty member Nurtured in 
intellectual potential that had never before been recognized. A fellow student who encouraged someone to take a risk and do that crazy ISP they were dreaming about. You have told me stories of coming back to campus after decades away and being recognized immediately by a beloved professor. And you have told me stories of lifelong friendships that continue to enrich your daily lives. Here at New College, these relationships extend beyond these personal connections. Many colleges of liberal arts and sciences are seen as intellectual retreats cut off from the rest of the world. Again, we do things differently at New College because we have a different, bolder vision of nurturing the next generation of innovators. Our campus extends far beyond our physical peri perimeter. Through coursework, internships, independent studies, and senior thesis projects, New College students are engaged community members, conducting research in Sarasota Bay and Manatee River, contributing to many of the finest assets of our community. And I'm gonna name just a few. The Multicultural Health Initiative, Moat Marine Lab, the, Mar the Ringling Museum, Visions of the Black Experience Film Festival, Unidos Now, and so, so many more. We are small but mighty because of the extraordinary support and partnership we receive from our community. So yes, New College is still new because we embrace the power of these relationships and community. And I have one last reason why New College is as new as ever. New College produces innovators and solutions. In the more than 40 years I've been in higher education, I have never seen an intellectual community so devoted to solutions as New College. I see this focus in student efforts to revise our policy regarding herbicides on campus and to introduce legislation on mental health issues and food insecurity. I see it in staff council's community building efforts. I see it in the care of our, that the Black History Month Planning Committee took in creating this year's program that was so precisely chosen for the needs of our time. And I also see it in the generosity of our donors who know the transformative power of student scholarships. And mostly I see it in the amazing array of independent studies and thesis projects that our students design and complete whether that be the beautiful new mural that students created in the Ham Center or the bold production of a gender inclusive play performed just a few weeks ago right around this corner. New College also produces innovators. The creativity of New College alumni is simply astounding. You have founded transformative nonprofits, developed new technologies, opened new areas of research, and led innovations in everything from finance and banking to education and community developed development. You've advised presidents, led international organizations, and created art that transformed individuals and communities. You've also launched a staggering number of new businesses. I confess I did not see this pattern when I first arrived at New College, but then I met one New College entrepreneur, and then another, and then another, and now I understand. Of course, New College produces entrepreneurs. What else would you expect from a curriculum that nurtures curiosity, encourages risk taking, and develops resiliency in the face of challenge? New College is rightly proud that per capita among public institutions in the US, we're the largest producers of students who go on to get a PhD in STEM disciplines. This attests to our success in developing original thinkers and researchers. But I wish we also had a data point for per capita production of entrepreneurs. My hunch is that we might lead here as well. So yes, New College is still new. But what about our future? Today is also about looking forward. Where are we headed? How do we ensure that in another five or 10 years, we can still proudly proclaim what is new about New College? My vision for New College's future is to realize, to fully live up to the vision of our founders. As I look around at the students and alumni of New College, I know that much of our founders' vision has been realized. Still, there is more work to be done to fully realize that vision that is New College. And I wanna to close today with two specific challenges as we embark on this next chapter of New College. 
First, we must continue to become an inclusive community where all independent thinkers and innovators who are eager to learn in this academic environment experience a strong sense of belonging. Our founders understood issues of equity, but they did not see the rich diversity of our state and our nation today. Our new vision for New College is to bring their vision into the 21st century, to ensure that our students, faculty, and staff reflect the beautiful population of our state and our nation. But it is not enough to focus solely on diversity. We must foster that sense of belonging for all. We must ensure that the black and brown members of our community experience a powerful sense of belonging. We must make sure that our policies and processes create an environment where our LGBTQ plus students, faculty and staff can thrive. We must ensure that our neurodiverse community members and people with disabilities and people with mental illness know that they are valued for the essential contributions that they make. And we must develop new programs to create solutions for the national challenge of young men turning away from college education while also continuing to work for gender equity. And we must ensure that people from all sides of the political spectrum are welcome here not just as visitors, but as valuable, respected, and necessary members of our community. Why is this our first charge? Because talent and creativity are not confined to any one demographic. If we truly seek to produce the next generation of innovative leaders, and we do, we must ensure that New College attracts talent from our com entire community. Our second challenge. We must challenge ourselves to fully realize the transformative power of integrating career education with a challenging honors curriculum. Our founders, ahead of their time as ever, specifically called in their founding documents for career and work experiences that would be integrated into the academic program. And we have much to be proud of here. We have invested in curricula that meet our state's most pressing needs, including computer and data science, environmental science, and health and humanities, to name just a few. Every student at New College is paired with a professional career coach before they even arrive on campus. And our career education curriculum builds over four years in full collaboration between our faculty and team of career educators. We also have launched an incubator for student entrepreneurs and a mentorship that links students with industry professionals. And thanks to the support of local and national philanthropic organizations, we have a thriving internship program that starts by asking our local partners what their top workforce needs are. This is impressive work, and the work has been rec already received multiple national citations for excellence. But there is more we could do. Our goal for internship is to have 100% of our students have at least one in four credit internship before they graduate because internships are a key predictor of career success. We also need stronger, deeper relationships with employers. Given our strengths in producing entrepreneur, entrepreneurs, I want to reach out and do more to connect with young people, both in our community and beyond, who want to develop their entrepreneurial passions and see the power of connecting that with a liberal arts education. And we need more discussion of how we, as the state's designated honors college, play a key role in Florida 2030, which is our state's ambitious plan to grow Florida into a top 10 global economy. We will never have the volume of graduates that our sister SUS universities produce, but our focus is on producing innovative leaders, and it's a necessary piece of the state's bold plan for the future. If If we take these two challenges together, becoming an inclusive campus that provides a powerful sense of belonging for all, and also realizing the integration of career and academic education, it is exciting to imagine the thriving new college of the future. A new college community of students, faculty, and staff that reflects the diversity of our state. A re-energized Bayfront an even more robust residential experience that helps students thrive in body, mind, and spirit. Places and opportunities on and off campus for students to interact with community members and employers. 
and a curriculum that continues to ensure that every student understands how their academic passions and skills address our nation's most pressing challenges. In just a moment, we're gonna to proceed to the beautiful Bayfront where we will celebrate and renew our commitment to this wonderful new college community. It's a fitting place to do so. From this view, we can see the Sarasota and Manatee counties that birthed us into existence and continue to nurture us every day. As we do so, let us all remember this delicate balance of I and we that I think is the foundation of New College. New, New College was founded on a bold vision of the power of independent thinkers to have a transformative impact on our community, our state and nation. This I and we is in our DNA. Some say that it is an audacious idea to think a school of our size can make the world a better place. But if I have learned anything in the last eight months, and trust me, I have learned a lot, it is that the size of a school does not predict the size of its impact. Having met so many of you bold new college thinkers, I'm filled with great promise and hope, not just for our college, but for a world that desperately needs your enthusiasm, your solutions, our commitment to relationships, and your innovations. Thank you for welcome, welcoming me into this audacious community, and thank you for keeping New College new. Thank you. Thank you, President Oker. I love that, President Oker. We're gonna close the ceremony with a benediction from Rabbi and Professor Susan Marks. And following the recessional of the platform party, we're gonna go on to the bay, as Dr. Oker said, um, and we will toast uh, our new president um, and uh, by Mike Michelson's lead, and also there'll be refreshments. So now I invite Rabbi Marks to give us the benediction. I echo the excitement that we have just experienced and I am very proud to be included in this moment. I, I thought about the benedictions that would be needed for such a day and as we've heard about the deep roots and giants that preceded Pat Oker and we at the same time, look ahead to the future that she's envisioning for us. I think we also appreciate the great challenge that she must feel as she stands in this place. And so I looked to tradition. I looked at the Talmud, and there's this wonderful story about Moses. And Moses was talking to God and saying, you know, why are you doing it this way? And God said, here, I'll show you. And suddenly Moses finds himself in Rabbi Akiba's classroom. And he's sitting at the back of the classroom. He's not doing very well. He has no clue what's going on in Rabbi Akiba's classroom. And he's feeling like, wait a second, who am I? What am I doing here? And then in response to a question, there is a Rabbi Akiba who says, oh, we know this because Moses, our great teacher, told us so. And so I think that lesson is that you stand in the moment that you're in. The past is huge. The future is huge. But nobody but you can stand in this moment. And so we're standing with you. And our blessing for you is that you find all the strength that you've outlined all around you and draw on it so that you can live this moment and lead us where we want to be led. So that's part of the blessing. And then the other blessing, also from Talmud, draws, draws on the words of Rabbi Akiba, not Rabbi Akiba, Rabbi Hanina. And Rabbi Hanina explained that from my teachers I have learned so much from my colleagues even more. 
but from my students most of all. And we have the most magnificent students here at New College. We have curious and passionate and determined and persistent, wonderful people. And I know from your words that you've glimpsed that, you've seen the alumni, you've seen our students, but that you remember that most of what we can learn is from our students. May this be God's will.